Greetings all, Ferrari Man 601 here. Welcome back to F1 2017 and welcome to Monaco. We're going to do another classic race today, this time in the McLaren MP44. I know a lot of you have been waiting for this one. Here it is. Unfortunately, and I'm not quite sure why, but this game does not recognize the clutch on my Thrustmaster pedals. That means, quite regrettably, that we've got to drive this car with paddles. So I'm going to drive it as if it were a semi-auto. It's not the smoothest thing in the world. So before everybody starts criticizing how bad I am at changing gear and that I've never driven a manual car before, that's what's going on here. I drive a manual in real life. I have driven a race car before. I know how this is really supposed to be done. I actually can't do it due to technical limitations. However, enough said, let's go and try our one-shot qualifying. I'm expecting to be at the back of the field. Of course, the Delta is to the F2004, and there's absolutely no shot of us keeping up with that thing. Just trying to keep it out of the barriers. That is the name of the game today. to say the sounds aren't half bad, nor are the visuals. Not the best quality lap in the world, I will admit. That is good for P10. That is 10th in class, which means that we are dead last in the field. With qualifying complete, all that remains is the main event. We'll be live and uninterrupted for the Grand Prix tomorrow, so make sure you join us then. Yeah, we are dead last in class, and we are dead last overall as well. However, that's what I was expecting, because this car is always at the back of these classic races. And, well, now we're in this car, so we're going to be at the back of the classic race. However, that's not to say we might not be able to do something in terms of improving our position. The other MP44 obviously being our direct competition, but maybe the 4.6s can be reachable. But beyond that, I don't think we're going to be able to fight with anybody else. However, who knows? It's Monaco. Anything can happen. All right, so here we are, sat on the grid here at Monaco at the very tail end of the field. We've got our work cut out for us, but half of this race is just about survival, and then the other half is about whatever maneuvers you can pull off against other drivers. So let's see how this goes. We'll wait quite a while here to get underway on the formation lap. First look at track conditions here. Everything looks okay. It's a beautiful day here in the Principality. Car status is also okay. be a real challenge to keep temperatures up uh, here on this formation lap.
trying to keep some semblance in those all-important rear tires here. They are transmitting all of our torque, obviously. And here we go. Oh boy, MP44 full field at Monaco. Here goes nothing. Which way do we go off the start? Do we go left, do we go right? We go right, we have more escape options if we need them, all right. Twenty laps here. Through Casino Square for the first time. No idea how we kept our front wing attached. And there's contact. More contact. I got hit from behind. That pushed me into a 4-6. I'm now missing part of my front wing. Trying Jensen Button's signature move. All right, that gets us up into P18. Here's where we're going to notice that wing damage. Just slightly. far we're okay. There's that understeer. We are really going to have to look after the car here. But it does look like we've consolidated P18, eighth in class. And again, that is about where we should be, given the relative pace of this car versus all of the other classics. Just run head first into some pit boards. So aside from being decapitated, so far things are going okay. And evidently we have proven that those pit boards are non-collidable objects in F1 2017. We are well and truly going backwards relative to the rest of the field. That is for sure. We may well have to make a pit stop here. I'm not quite sure what's going to give up first. My patience with the loss of front downforce or the tires, because as you can see, we are torturing the tires through every corner.
Tire wear actually looks really good. There are really no high-speed corners here. That really is what wears the tires out, aside from locking them up. However, considering we're not really going to be in any fights for position here, we can turn this into a pseudo-review, I suppose. How is the MP44? Well, as I mentioned at the start, I'm not able to drive it in the most authentic manner. I don't have any proper manual shifting capacity. Because for whatever reason, my clutch is not recognized by the game, so I'm driving it with the paddles, driving it as if it were a sequential. So that does take away from the experience. However, I do have to say VRC's MP44 for Assetto Corsa is far better a driving experience as we tag the barriers. And I've brought out the VSC. The other McLaren has crashed. Pretty sure I caused that accident indirectly. I'm going to use this opportunity to dive into the pits. However, what does this car feel like? The car feels pretty good, I must say. We did not change the front wing. However, we'll put some new tires on and maybe the car will be okay. flags everywhere. However, getting back to my train of thought previously, VRC's MP44 is a far better driving experience. It just feels way more accurate because Aceto Corsa is a proper sim, and this is not. However, I do think Cody's have done a good job with the sounds. Perhaps they're not the most authentic, but they are quite believable. And that's more contact there trying to let you buy. Yellow Got a yellow flag up ahead. There's a lot of debris down there. Letting you through. However, geez, keeping a train of thought together is not easy. Uh, I do have to say, VRC's mod is better. We've established that. Not being able to use proper shifting, yeah, it, it hurts this car a lot in my particular experience. Because I do think you should try and employ authentic shifting methods when at all possible, and they should be possible in this game. The game says that it's possible. Unfortunately, it's just not possible for my particular setup. If I still had my Logitech G27, perhaps it would recognize it, perhaps it would not. I have no way of knowing. Having to use the paddles does take away from the experience, I will say. In terms of the physics, it is certainly a lot more lively than any of the other cars we have looked at so far. But 
as with every other car in this game, it does feel like something is always there to save you when things really get pear-shaped. The car's power really does not feel very explosive, I must say. Turbocharging obviously lends itself to turbo lag, and in these days there was no such thing as an MGUH to spool the turbo up preemptively, so turbo lag was a thing. However, you don't really feel it in this. Power is quite linear. Still got a yellow flag here. Are they ever going to pick up this debris, or are they just going to wait for me to keep running it over? Man, I am tagging that barrier a lot today. Thankfully, the car is quite chunky at the rear. It can take a lot of abuse. You can throw it into some really cool looking slides, I will say. But, uh,. That's not even quite realistic because you can get into a slide far too easily and you can recover one even more easily, so yeah, Cody's physics. Rear tires are still absolutely fine despite all the wheel spin. Come on, Marshalls, you're not doing Monaco very proud. Typically, the Marshalls at Monaco, they, they have entire cars craned away in a lap or two. A little bit of debris. I'm surprised it's just not teleporting itself off the track. Such is the glamour of Monaco. Yeah, 36.1. There's no chance we're picking that up. And we haven't even technically hit halfway yet. The leaders have. I'm a lap down, remember. Almost lost the other side of the front wing there. And that was some air <laughs> over the curbs. These big tires here really helping me. I should also say that this is my first time driving the F1 2017 version of Monaco, so I'm still getting used to all of the precise placements of the barriers and whatnot. Every rendition of this track is slightly different. in P11. Wow, P11 has lapped me now.
Yep, more blue flags. Finally stubbed down the yellow flag here. Took them, what, five, six laps to do that? Those RB6s, that's the race leader. I've got two laps down? That's bad. Peel off into the pits here. Might as well turn it into a bit of a test session. Release, release. Fuel Delta is plus 1.44. I'm just happy to have a healthy car again. Working lap 12 of 20 by our count here. I, I do believe the leader is on lap 14. I'm aware of the blue flags, it's just this is a really tough place to let someone through. We'll do it here. Almost missed the chicane. See what happens when you get blue flags in bad spots. See what our pace is though relative to the 4.6. I'd easily be able to overtake him. He's actually holding me up quite a bit.
we're on lap 14. That makes me believe the leaders are on lap 16. race leader. At least you're getting to see all the other cars in the race. It's not like we're running all alone out here. flags at me. There's nobody immediately behind. That was a big tap against the barriers. Car's okay. We are on simulation damage, by the way. Not entirely sure that this car would actually survive a belt like that in reality. But hey, it's Monaco. If you don't make contact with the barriers at least once, you're not trying hard enough. Lap 16 of 20 now. Was very sideways. We have five laps of fuel remaining. We don't have five laps left in the race, so that's good. goes. It's the other F2004. Interesting to note the RB6 is leading this race. By my count, this could well be our final lap. was a big tap into the barriers. It's another big tap into the barriers. We've lost the entire left side of the front wing main plane here. Oh, crap. 
Well, that's how you end a race at Monaco. Yeah. That's not a particularly good way to end. Yeah, that's how that works. And unfortunately, due to a bug in the game, I actually can't get out of this replay mode. If I try, escape key doesn't work, enter key doesn't work, I can manipulate the replay itself, but, yeah, I actually have to kill the program to get out of this mode now, so, yeah, it's a real incentive not to crash, but we did crash, so, great. Until next time, though, Ferrari Round 601 saying thanks very much, and we will see you soon.